Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bikes. I'm your friend Amudan Shakti Vel, and in this video, we're going to learn about how we can perform scrolling using the new sequence class. Again, during the APM Java client 7 to 8 migration, they have deprecated a lot of classes. One among them is touch action and multi touch action, which is normally used for swiping and scrolling operations or even dapping and other stuff. So instead of using that, how we can use this new sequence class to perform the scrolling or swiping uh, irrespective of Android or iOS device, right? Uh, so in, in touch action, we had a problem. We, uh, you know, we have to handle them differently, but but with the help of sequence class, we can basically uh, use the same snippet of code uh, and then handle the scrolling for both Android and iOS. We're going to see how in this particular video. Right, without wasting a lot of time, let me go to this uh, page action helper class, right? And again, if you are directly checking this video, uh, you know, I will leave the link to this uh, framework. What uh, this framework was initially on Java client seven, and uh, I have made a couple of videos before to basically help to migrate that to 8.x. One part of that is, is also removing this deprecated uh, Android touch action and iOS touch action uh, classes, we will be replacing with the sequence. Right. I will also leave the link uh, in the description to the video where I explained, uh, uh, you know, how I'm doing the scrolling for mobile, right, previously. So you should watch that where I explained all the stuff, even though I will try to cover them on a high level here. But if you want to look for a detailed explanation, you can uh, refer that particular video. Good. So now uh, let's say if somebody is calling the scroll for mobile and then uh, they are passing the web element. Again, there is no more mobile element, Android element and iOS element in, in Java client 8.x. So so first, um, let's assume this is the application um, and you have the screen like this. You want to scroll till web view. That's, that's going to be our agenda. So what we can do is first, uh, there are two conditions to scroll. First one is uh, if they the element that we are looking for, that is web view, is not enabled in the screen, we want to scroll. Two, uh, how long we want to scroll? We want to scroll until it reaches the end of the page. That is two. You can also add one more condition. For example, in applications like Facebook, Instagram, there is no end page, right? So you will end up, this 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 keeps on going, right? So you can you can make sure that you have a counter uh, to, to perform maximum number of swipes, for example, 10, 15, 20, based upon your needs. Since the application under test, what I'm taking is having an end of the page, I'm not considering that into the uh, you know picture. Good, so what I'm doing is uh, to first check is the element is not enabled. Uh, basically, uh, you know, there are two types. So either you can pass a by locator or a web element. If it is a web element, you can directly check is displayed and enabled. And then if there is no such element, you can return true. But in case of bilocators, right? So you can find the element. You cannot find the element. Again, if you can find the element, you have to handle the exception. I think if you if you use find elements, okay, then the list will be uh, one if the element is present. Okay, if the element is present that you are looking for, then the list will be, uh, list size will be one. So then I will check whether it is, you will, I will only scroll if it is empty, okay? But in case of iOS, even though the element is not within the screen, okay, even though you are looking for web view, you perform a driver.find elements in the screen, it will still return you one. So in, for iOS alone, I will look for an attribute called visible. And if that, if that attribute is false, I will scroll down. If it is true, I will not scroll down. So all these things I have explained in detail in the uh, in the video so i will leave that video link in the description you can also watch that right okay so in on these two conditions if the element is not displayed uh and it's not the end of the page basically i'm using page source where i compare the previous page source okay uh for example um so this is one page source okay initially it will be empty string and this will have some strings like a b c d whatever and once we compare these two these two are different so it will perform a scroll first time. Next time, it will compare the page source of this with this. So both are different, so it will continue scrolling. Until you find a place where the page source is this, once again, you perform a scroll, and again, the page source is also the same. So it stops scrolling, right? So these are all the two conditions. So this comes the main part where you want to perform the scrolling, right? Uh, we are trying to perform a scrolling independent of the screen size, right? 
that's why uh, we are trying to get the size of the device using this once we do that uh, we want to perform a scroll right so maybe i will take a help from the annotation uh, uh, just a minute okay so imagine this is your screen size okay so you can you can perform a scroll from here to here so if you press your finger here and move here it will perform a scroll but most of the application will have some you know footer section so we don't want to worry about it and then there will be keypads there so it is not re recommended to scroll you know perform scroll from here to here so what i normally do is i take half of my screen okay so this is the half of the screen so most of the you know keypads will be below this okay okay so i will take half and then i will perform i will put my finger here and then i will scroll till uh, one by fourth of the size for example if the height is thousand of this device okay just for example and the length is 500 then i will start my scrolling from 250 uh, comma 500 and i'll perform scroll till 250 comma 750 right so this is th or this is 250 so in in y axis is 250 250 500 750 and it will be 1000 here so size of this 1000 right so i will perform scroll something like this from i'll put my finger here scroll here here and then release the finger that's what we are exactly going to do so short x is basically size dot get width that's going to give me 500 divided by 2 is going to give me 250 and then the end x is is also the same so i, I can use the same and then start y is size dot get height divided by 2 that is 500 and uh, the same way size dot get height into 0.25 i can divide by 4 or i can multiply by 0.25 and then i am converting into int so this will be 250 right so 1000 if i want to convert 1000 to 250 i have to do multiplication of 0.25 right so i have found out the coordinates right until then this everything is same uh, let me clear all the drawings uh, and then I'll also uh, close the annotation. So now, until here, everything is same from Java client version 7 to 8. But after this, if it is Android, we are performing a scroll for Android, where uh, Android touch action, we are using Android touch action here. For iOS, we are using iOS touch action. So exactly what we are doing, we are putting our finger in this particular start X and Y, then we will wait for 200 sec milliseconds. Then we will move to the new point that is index and NY. Then we will release our finger and we will perform the action. This is what we did. Similarly, in the new version, uh, we have to use a different class, uh, void, and then perform scroll using uh, sequence class, right? Okay. So here they have something called as pointer input. Okay. Uh, pointer input. And then you have to point uh, what kind of input. In in mobile, you can have three kinds of input. Either you can perform a touch, you can perform the touch using a mouse, you can perform it using a pen, right? So what how you want to mimic it? Basically, I want to do a touch kind of mimic. And then what else they're asking for? Uh, pointer input and then they should be asking for a name for this. Okay, this I want. Let's say if we are performing multi, uh, let's say uh, pinch and zoom, you have to use two fingers, right? So at that time, you want to differentiate these two things. That's why they have a name attribute. Again, you can give some random names. I can say just first finger. Uh, this is my first finger input. I can simply say finger. That is up to you, right? And then uh, let's call it just input, right? And then you have to also create a uh, new sequence sequence class and this is what very important uh, so sequence is asking for an input source yeah input source is already we have found that is input right we are basically use our touch touching as an input right and then it is asking something like initial length okay if you go here it is asking for int initial length you can give zero I do not know what is the real use of it. I have tried to give 0, 1, 2, everything started to work. 
but I, I do not know what is their whole agenda here. But again, uh, so you have to perform a sequence of actions, right? So first, what action you want to perform? First, let's say if there is a mobile uh, like this, you want to move your finger, okay, to the middle of the screen, okay, of that screen. That's what you want to do. So that's what we are going to perform. So add action, and then you can say uh, you have to do interactions, right? Um, so basically, basically you can say just finger. Sorry, guys, it, I I don't remember this by heart. But again, yeah. So this is input. Input dot create pointer move. So you want to first move to the center of the screen, right? So and then. So again, you don't have to wait anything. You can directly go to the center of the screen now. So I'm giving duration as zero. Let's say you want to wait for some time and then move to the center of the screen. You can give custom time. And then they are asking for origin. So origin, uh, pointer input dot origin dot view. So there are three types of origin. One, let's say if there is a mobile, okay? If there is a mobile like this, okay? The viewport is something that is what you see. View whatever you are viewing here, okay? Uh, and then you can also say pointer with reference to the pointer. Let's say if you if you have some pointer somewhere already defined, then you can use that as a reference. Uh, if you want to have your element as a reference, then you can use this. But in our case, we are going to use the entire screen size. So we are going to put viewport. And then it's asking for uh, X coordinate and Y coordinate, which we already found out previously. So we will try to use the same thing here. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, sorry, I have to use with the parameter type, right? So good. So now uh, the star x and then the star y, right? These were the two things. Once I move my finger there, what I want to do basically, uh, I want to, my keyboard is throwing some problems. Yeah. Once I go there, I, after, you know, moving my mouse, let's say this is exactly like I'm moving my mouse to the center of the screen. Then I want to press it, right? I want to click on, uh, you know, I want to touch it to perform a scroll. That's what we are going to mimic. So uh, what you can do is pointer uh, input dot mouse button, right? Dot uh, middle dot s org so what this does is uh, so here you can see input dot create pointer down so i want to basically uh, go down so press down right i want to press down the screen that's what i want to do so you can basically do this input dot and then this should be pointed, pointed, right? Everything is good. So what I want to do is, once I go there, I want to press the mouse button. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, there is left button, like button. I do not know why we want to use uh, middle here, but this is what I found from the documentation. But again, once uh, this is done, now we have pressed our screen, uh, you know, uh, finger there. And instead of this as input, I could rename this to finger so it, it makes more sense so i move my finger there i press my finger there it makes more logic sense add action and then finger once i do this i want to move somewhere right uh, so this is what exactly so you can take some time duration of mill is you can you know you don't want to scroll very fast so you can do something like this and then the same thing right uh, you can copy the same thing and then instead of start x, I can put index here in y. That's it. Once you do this, you are now at the uh, ending point. Now you want to lift your finger up so that you can do finger dot create uh, pointer up, right? Pointer up. And then you can simply say whatever the finger that you pressed, you can just copy it, put it here, right? So now this will take your finger up. Once you do all these things, you basically have a sequence of events, right? Once you have this sequence of events, you can perform a scroll. For that, so driver driver manager dot get driver is basically giving me the uh, driver. 
so there is a perform method uh, that is only available uh, if you if you cast this to apm driver okay so basically what i'm doing is i'm casting my whatever i can have uh, if android driver i can have ios driver i can have remote driver whatever it is i'm just casting it to apm driver so i get a method called as perform uh so that should be a perform method so let's see uh just a second so you notice if you notice there is this brackets getting confused so i added another brackets and then if you notice here there is a perform method that is coming that is asking for collection of sequence so I have to put this sequence in a collection. So what I can do is I can simply use collections dot singleton list, okay, and then I can pass that collection sequence, right? So once I pass the sequence into this collection, it becomes a collection of sequence. That's it. Once it is done, it will perform the sequence of action. And there is no separation between your Android and iOS. We can safely remove this method, okay, uh, and then we don't need this anymore. We can simply call perform scroll using sequence. We can pass start x, start y, end x, and end y. So that's it. So everything is good. Let's try to run it and check whether our test is working fine. Again, we can also try using a different mouse button and then see what's happening. So it is now scrolling until it finds the web view. Uh, once it finds the web view, it clicks on it and the test pass. Let's try to use left. <clears throat> so whatever the finger that you are pressing, you want to take that same thing out. Let's see what's happening. So basically this is also working fine. So I do not know what is the relevance, but yeah, this is what I get from their documentation. So I use this, you can also use left it seems. Okay, everything is working fine. This code should work for both Android and iOS. I hope you find this use video useful. Uh, if yes, please do subscribe to the channel. I see you guys in another great video. Tada, bye bye.